The Tokener Explains, a beginner's guide to developing smart contracts using the Solidity programming language on top of the Ethereum blockchain platform. In the last episode, we have been talking about conditional statements. And in this episode, we will be talking about error handling, which is a very common use case of conditionals. And uh, Ethereum provides two special keywords, assert and require, to, that do some built-in functionality to make error handling very, uh, very easy. In, at the end of the last episode, uh, we altered our smart contract that was introduced before uh, to only change what message was stored inside that anyone could read, but writing what message was stored inside was restricted to uh, only the person that before deployed the smart contract. However, as we have written it right now, when we call this uh, change message function, when we're not actually the owner, the function just completes successfully and we don't know that we were actually doing something that was not allowed. And uh, another problem that often occurs is when our smart contracts become a little bit more complex uh, is that somewhere down the line there are many checks that pass but then one check does not pass and we just want everything as a whole to fail. Uh, we, this is known as an atomic transaction because we either want everything as a whole to succeed or we don't want to uh, anything to happen at all. So to do this Ethereum has two special functions or keywords require and assert. And re using require is far more common and it's also a lot nicer to use. Require should be used whenever you want to make sure that someone calls your code correctly and require takes two parameters first some condition that should be true and then an error message that will be returned right away without executing anything else and uh, everything that has been executed so far will be rolled back so it will look like nothing has happened at all and so if the condition is not true then the error message is returned and if the condition is true then we just continue on with the next line of code so here you see an example and if the balance is higher or equal than 100 the code will just continue on but if it is lower then the uh, error message you do not have enough money will be returned to uh, to the caller then there is a function revert which basically always calls require and it's a lot nicer to use revert instead of require if you have many nested conditions such as uh, the example over here where you have multiple if statements inside one another and only when the combination of these requirements is not met then we want to revert. Besides require we also have assert. When require reverts everything that has happened so far then it is like nothing happened at all and the person that called your code will also still have the same amount of money that they had before. It will not use up any uh, any uh, money for the computation that occurred uh, because that part will be rolled back. However when you use assert then the money that has been reserved to allow the computation of the transaction will be completely depleted and this is as a fail-safe to really make sure that nothing after the statement is executed um, but this also means that the assert is a lot lower level and it's a lot less nice to use. Usually we do not want to use a cert uh, inside functions that a user might call directly but instead only use it internally inside some functions where we are entirely sure that it will never be called. Basically if it could be called then we have an error in our code and there are many code analysis tools out there that allow us to uh, check if there are edge cases in which our assert statements would be called and so we can use asserts at the start and at the end of some of our internal functions to make sure that the implementation of those functions uh, is right, is correct at the current time but also that when we at some point change the code that it will remain correct. But just to recap, usually you want to use require and assert is only used internally. There are some exceptions that you might generate 
by doing some other weird things like dividing by zero or attempting to access an element of an array that does not actually exist because the array is smaller than the location you try to access uh, and in these cases uh, an assert style exception that is all the gas that is uh, that has been uh, reserved to execute the transaction will be used up uh, and that type of exception will be automatically thrown when these kinds of of uh, failures occur so just to keep this in mind uh, usually when you try to do a division with some user provided number you should use a require statement before to make sure that that number is not zero and things like that so again uh, in this case we also try to perform a final fail safe uh, instead of running some garbage code because there's no sensible thing to do in these kinds of exceptional situations uh, and that is why these assert style exceptions are thrown in these cases alright that is enough theory let's go back to our smart contract and actually put this in practice so this is what we've ended up with at the end of the last episode as uh, explained at the beginning of this episode when the change message function is called by someone that is not the owner it will just successfully complete I mean I can show you again right now we've compiled it we run it on the JavaScript VN we deploy it and in the contract uh, the current string is I like cookies and if we have here a new string I'm currently uh, calling this from the same account as I deployed it from so this is allowed and when we check the new message we see a new string if I try a different account test and I try to change the message we see here a successful green checkbox that it successfully worked but if we check the message nothing happened and also we did use a little bit of gas as you can see here this is no longer 100 ether but 99.9999 something ether because a little bit uh, of gas was used so a little bit of money was used uh, to actually execute this code and that's not nice because it mean, means that when someone calls this function and they use it improperly that they're actually using money by calling it and usually it would be better to show an error message and let them keep their money in that case rather than making it disappear rather than uh, forwarding that money to the persons that attempted to execute their uh, their bad request so we will be changing the if statement in this function here on line 13 we will change this to require message dot sender is equal to the o owner and if it's not equal we will show uh, the error message only the owner is allowed to alter the stored message and now we can remove this if statement because the require statement does the same thing as well as making sure that if it fails everything is reverted including the money paid for uh, performing this transaction so let's compile and deploy the new version so let's remove the old version deploy the new version uh, and as you see after reverting I have uh, the accounts have been reset as well so currently from this account here with 99.9999 ether we have deployed the smart contract and we can still just like before change it to a new message so currently the message is ally cookies we change it now it's new message and now when we try to change it from a different account um, so uh, this is account 3 if we try to change it now you see that we no longer get this green check mark here and instead we see here an error the transaction has uh, errored with a reversion the transaction has been reverted to its initial state and the reason is only the owner is allowed to alter the stored message now when you check here we still have used a little bit of ether but most of it has been returned to us uh, because the reversion has occurred uh, and no uh, the, the function hasn't uh, executed successfully but has created a reversion so in this way 
we make sure that if someone tries to use our smart contract in an improper way they are prevented from doing so and they get an explanation telling them what they did wrong and possibly how they can uh, change the arguments supplied to make sure that it might work. That was it for this episode. Leave us a comment, a like, subscribe and ring the notification bell to know whenever new episodes appear. The Tokener Explains is a collaboration between the Tokener and Resilia. If you're interested in the latest cryptocurrency related information and news, go to thetokener.com. And if you're building your own blockchain related product and have some questions or would like some help, reach out to us at resilia.nl.